I want to talk now about two types of validity that are very closely related. In many ways, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. And those are called convergent, convergent validity. Convergent meaning something that converges, and you'll see why. And divergent, divergent validity. And this is also often called, just so you know, discriminant validity. Discriminant meaning having to do with this being able to discriminate between two different things. So these ideas, uh, this is not something you need to memorize, but uh, they come out of a very of a classic uh, research paper by some guys named Campbell and and Fisk. This was in uh, 1959. You can, you can look this paper up if you want to give yourself a real headache trying to read through their explanation of it, but it's, it is quite a neat paper if you, if you take the time to do this, and it's a, it was a real classic paper discussing uh, these ideas, and this is where I just want you to understand where this comes from. Um, but you can, you can find that paper if you're curious uh, in, in the library databases. Um, so convergent validity. The idea that the book gets into some, some details about how you would go about showing convergent validity and divergent validity. What I want to try to do here is give you the overall concept, a real intuitive feeling for what it is we're trying to do. What is the main point here? And the idea behind convergent validity is, again, the, the overarching idea here is we're, we're trying to make sure that our measure is measuring what it is that we hope that it's measuring, that we claim that it's measuring, and not something else instead. So with convergent validity, the idea is that uh, measurements that should be related are, let me put that down, measurements, measurements that, and I'll explain what I mean by this, that should be related, that they are related. Um, and, and let me put the flip side of that. For divergent validity, what we're saying is that measurements, measurements uh, that should not be related aren't related. What I mean here is Say, for example, you are measuring, and this is the same example they use in your textbook, you're, you want to measure aggression. And you have some scale, some uh, questionnaire that you're going to give people to try to measure their aggression. You also decide, though, that you're going to go out, and, and I think in the book they talk about measuring aggression in children. And so you're going to go out and also use a second method of measuring the same thing, you're going to go out and have people make observations of the children on the playground. So the children answer some questions on a written questionnaire, uh, and they also are observed by people on the playground uh, to see how aggressive they are. And these people judge, you know, maybe on a scale from 1 to 10 or something like that, how aggressive each child is. Since both of those methods, since you're claiming that both of those methods measure the same thing, they both measure aggression, the scores that you get from each method, those should be related. So that's when, when we say measurements that should be related are, we mean that if we're giving a, a behavioral measurement of aggression and a written measurement of aggression, those two things ought to give related scores. So uh, another way that we could say this is if we have different uh, methods, like uh, observational, you know, observations of behavior versus written responses on a questionnaire. If we have different methods that are measuring or that we believe or that we claim are measuring the same, uh, the same underlying construct, in this case the construct is aggression, then those methods even though the methods are different, because they're measuring the same construct, those methods should, they should give 
uh, scores that are correlated. And again, by correlated, we mean things that are consistently related. So if a child gets higher scores on the behavioral measure of aggression, they ought to also get higher scores on the uh, written measure of aggression. If we saw the opposite of this, if we saw that you went out and people judged a child to be very aggressive because they could see the child engaging in all these aggressive behaviors, pushing and kicking and punching and yelling, and then you gave them your written questionnaire where they answered some questions, and the written questionnaire said they had a low level of aggression, well, obviously, that would indicate that there's something wrong with that measurement technique. So the fact that the measurement techniques give the same results is at least some indication that they are measuring the same thing and that they are measuring what you mean for them to be measuring. And this is why it's called, why it's called convergent validity because the idea is that both of these techniques, what, or it could be more than two techniques, any number of different methods that you're using, different approaches or techniques you're using for measuring the same construct should all converge on the same answer, on the same type of result or score. They should all converge on a, high, uh, on a score that indicates a high level of aggression, or they should all converge on a score that indicates a low level of aggression. There should be convergence. And if there is, then you are demonstrating convergent validity. And if there isn't convergence, then your measurements lack convergent validity, and there's an indication that there's something wrong that you should follow up on. Now, on the flip side of this, we have the idea of divergent validity. Here, what we're concerned about is we're worried that maybe we're not measuring what we think we're measuring. Maybe we're capturing something else, or at least part of some other variable is influencing our measurement. And so divergent validity is what we're really concerned with here are other constructs or, or variables that, that at least seem like it's reasonable, it's likely that they could be influencing our measurement. So in the textbook, they give the example of uh, the idea that maybe when people, maybe when your, your judges who are making these observational measurements of the children on the playground, when they make those measurements, even though they're told to watch for aggressive behavior, maybe without them even being aware of it, they're giving, they're picking up on, they're measuring energy level, how energetic the different children are. Uh, and because some of the children are running around more energetically, they're accidentally interpreting that, incorrectly interpreting that as a more aggressive behavior. And so children who have a higher energy level are getting a higher score, which means that your behavioral measure in this case is really measuring energy level and not aggression, or at least there's some influence of energy level on your measurement. And so how we address that and make sure that that is not the case is we have the judges also measure energy level, or we have, you know, we use the same approach. We have some people measure aggression and we have some people measure energy level. And we compare using that same general measurement technique, watching the children, making an observational uh, uh, assessment of their, be of their visible behavior. We use the same general approach or technique, but we measure different things that we think could be getting confused. We measure on the one hand aggression and on the other hand energy level. And then we compare the scores from those two different assessments to see if we're getting scores that are related. And theoretically, we shouldn't be because the energy level should be distinct from the uh, degree of aggression. So the way that we can put that here is we can say, I'm going to say the same, the same method uh, measuring, when we use the same method to measure, when it is measuring uh, different constructs, in this case, it is measuring on the one hand aggression and on the other hand energy level. So when the same method is measuring different constructs, it gives scores uh, that are not correlated. 
the main idea is again that we're measuring uh, uh, different constructs and so those should give very different uh, scores in other words we should not get uh, uh, high scores uh, if a kid gets high scores on aggression not all the children who get high scores on aggression should also get high scores on energy level if that is happening then it is possible our techniques our methods are failing to discriminate failing to show divergence between these two different things and that is why it's sometimes called discriminant validity because the idea is we should be able to discriminate with our measurement techniques we should be able to discriminate between when we are detecting aggression versus when we are detecting something that is related but different like energy level